If you're playing Honkai Star Rail, then you might be thinking about or have gotten to the point where you now need to build up your characters and team, juice their stats and gear them up to make them top tier so you can flex on your enemies with tons of damage, survivability and healing. Well, there are some really easy mistakes to make that you will want to avoid to save you a bunch of time farming, so you don't fall behind everyone else and don't worry, we've got you covered here and we'll go over everything you'll want to know for building your team, your characters, how everything works and what mistakes to avoid making. First thing is first, let's not waste your time. So stop what you're doing now and go and look at your list of characters that you have obtained in games so far. Whether you're free to play, a small dolphin or a giant whale, this applies to everyone. You will have limited resources, especially to start with, so you don't want to waste pumping materials into every character or random characters that you just want to use in the moment. As you progress more and things get harder, you're going to need to focus on particular characters that you will be using. So picking a core team now is going to save you a bunch of level up books, like home materials, and even relics, which will take some time and lots of in-game energy to grind. And speaking of the grind, we're out here grinding YouTube, so if you hit that like button down below, I personally guarantee you a 100% chance to get a 5 star character on your next pull. So tell me in the comments if you actually got one. Generally, for your primary team comp, you will want a tank to absorb damage for everyone else and take the brunt of the enemy attack, a healer to heal and buff your team up when in danger, a DPS to pump out a ton of damage, and either another DPS or a support depending on your character list. Support characters should not be slept on. They provide great utility and buffs to your team and can be make or break on some fights. So check your characters and let's go through some suggestions. For a tank, you will generally want to pick a preservation character, such as Gpard if the RNG gods have blessed you with this 5 star tank, or if not, March 7th and main character Rover will do just fine. Rover even doubles as a tanky DPS, so you can't go wrong there. For your healer, you'll be looking for an abundance character. For most players, Natasha will fill that slot as you get her through the story, and she will do amazingly. But again, if RNG is on your side, then the 5 star character Bailu will be even better with AoE heals and revives. When it comes to your DPS slot, picking a hunt character is a great way to go. If you're free to play, Dan Hung will fill this slot nicely with great single target damage. He's quite the powerhouse as you level him up, however the 5 star character Yang King, I think that's how you say it, and Sila are top tier picks if you get them, and they make short work of most enemies. Finally is your support or extra DPS slot in your party. In many cases, bringing another DPS to match enemy weakness types is ideal, such as the AoE characters like Herta, Himiko and more. But support characters are still amazing. For support you will want to go with a Harmony character, Bronya as a 5 star being probably the best, but let's be honest we don't all have her. So your choices are probably Asta as you get her early on for free, and she's great for giving you party wide damage stacking buffs, but also Ting Yun, who who is a top tier supporter with insane single target buffing capabilities. Of course, pick whoever you like, what you have and what works for you for your party, this is just a guideline. But now you know roughly who to pick and make a team composition, you can focus on levelling and gearing these characters first, so you don't waste items and materials and other characters you won't use later. Since gearing and levelling up everything on your character gives them a huge stat bonus, you will need this for harder content. And it's a big resource sink, so hopefully this helps you not waste items and progress faster. So let's go over how you build your character. First you have the details tab. Here you can see the stats and even the skills in a nice and easy way to read each one. You also have the level up button which you can use your character XP material items to juice their levels. At set level intervals of 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70, you will hit a cap that requires you to ascend your character with ascension materials. Think of this kind of like a level cap limit break, so they can be leveled up even more and there are some ticket rewards when you do this which is nice too. The next tab is for your light cone. Think of this like the weapon for your character. In game, these are essentially recorded memories that power you up. These come with a special effect called a superimposition. This activates if the type of your character matches the type of the light cone, such as the hunt character you can see on screen matching the type of the light cone to give me the bonus. Generally, it's better to match these to the correct character type, but higher rarity cones will give more stats when leveled up, so it depends on your collection. Just like your character, these need to be leveled up and ascended with light cone materials. This is another core part of powering up your character as they give you large stat bonuses. It isn't over yet though because next you have your tracers. These are like the skill trees of your characters. On this page, as you ascend your character, you can level up their skills, ultimates, passives and attacks. So make sure to check back to this page after ascension and if things are glowing, 
go and farm the materials and level up your character's traces to make their individual skills even stronger. But next you have a super important tab that you will unlock later in the game as you progress through the main story. So don't worry if you don't have it just yet, just keep playing. But you will want to know how this works. Here you basically have your character's gear which is called relics and planar ornaments. Using item set bonuses of either 4 or 2 pieces, or even 2 different 2 piece bonuses is a great way to power up your character based on what they do. For example for my sealer who is a DPS character, I'm matching the 2 piece bonus of the musketeer set for 12% attack, with the 2 piece bonus of the genius of brilliant stars for another 10% quantum damage. Sealer is a quantum damage dealer, so these 2 attack buffs work great for me. Furthermore you will want a matching set of planar ornaments to get another nice two-piece bonus. There's all different set bonuses, but for my sealer, as you can see, this one gives more attack. These items come with primary and secondary stats, which depending on the item can be different and may be perfect or terrible for your character. Gloves will always have a primary stat of attack, so these are great to level up first on your damage dealers, while hats always have a primary HP stat, which is great to level up first on your healers and tanks. But the body, feet, and planar ornament slot will have different primary stats depending on RNG. This is important because the primary stats go very high as you level up the relic. So you want to use and level up complementary primary stat relics to your characters that match the role that they play, such as attack on DPS, defense on tanks, and so on. Furthermore, each of these items will have secondary stats and up to four of them. These roll randomly and you gain and level them up as you level up the item itself. On the screen now, you can see what stats roll on the chess pieces, and now the feet. Next is the planar sphere. And finally, the link rope. Ideally, you will want to get items with primary and secondary stats that match what you want your character to do. So for a DPS, you will want a primary stat of attack with a secondary stat of flat attack, percentage attack, crit rate, and crit damage. However, this will be super rare and basically a god roll. This means you won't get those very often at all or very quickly. So in my opinion, focus on getting and leveling up a 4 star with the correct primary stat on each slot for your main party. Once you have this for all of your party members, you can then focus on getting perfect min-maxed relics with those secondary stats that you desire, as this will take a long long time and lots of RNG. Next is the Eidolon screen. This is where you can spend an item that you get from obtaining or pulling duplicates of that same character to power up that character. So this is likely going to take a long, long time as free to play, or a lot of pulls as a whale to max out a specific character. So generally, don't worry too much about the Eidolons. If you found this helpful, please hit that like button, it's a YouTube thing and it really really helps us out. And subscribe so you don't miss out on the next guide from us. And the two videos on screen now, we think you'll really enjoy if you did enjoy this one. If you liked this video and found it helpful, check out these videos on the screen now. And then tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below.